For the millions of us who manage to keep our employment, or find employment, during the greatest transfer of wealth and power in modern times, many of us have transitioned to teleworking or working from home entirely. It's been a boon to some, myself included given my medical condition, to be able to save money in both actual capital and time in terms of the commute to work or paying for gasoline. Or the added benefit of sleeping in, clocking into work in your lounge pants or pajamas and getting through your workday with little need to impress anyone or pay too much attention to office politics. However, the honeymoon period for this new normal will not last for long. So if you don't mind, I think we need to take a look at the dystopic and soon myopic corporate hell that awaits us. Aside from the policy proposals that are bound to come, the biggest concern that I've observed with our newfound working from home life is that the line between the personal life and the work life is further blurred. And this blurring is only going to get worse as for many businesses, like the one I'm currently at, entire sections of the company are becoming fully remote positions in the name of COVID. If you're not in a position to be investing your own time and money to build something of your own, or if you're not already a business owner or have majority stake in a company, then the soullessness of the 9 to 5 is only going to get worse. This isn't to say that society hasn't raised the alarm bells about our working conditions in the past, or mocked them in some way. Our contemporary media and art of the last 100 years has made some sort of quip about the disassociating and dehumanizing aspects of modern labor. From Charlie Chaplin's Modern Times to more recently Office Space, there has been a railing against, however impotent it may be, against the atomizing work life of modernity. One could even make the argument that these comedic parodies and observations of our modern, industrial or white-collar working conditions served only to normalize our cubicled or assembly line existence. Even though the films I mentioned earlier, which came out in 1936 and 1999 respectively, could support a family on their wages, something that is almost unthinkable now for many. But as the internet, cell phones, Skype, Zoom, social media, and other forms of instantaneous communication has blurred the line between work life and home life, the near ubiquitous presence of working from home will only make it so much worse. Allow me to expand on this point. It will continue to further a sense of atomization, because now there is no escape from your employment, your employer, and the stress that comes with it. For the millions of people in the cities, trapped by its allure only to be burned like a bug zapper on a summer night in June, who are crammed into their apartments like canned goods who can't afford to leave due to the rentier economy, either for the suburbs or the countryside, they'll be brutally reminded each day as they go to their desk or laptop that there is no exit from this life. No autonomy for you anymore. Work could call or check in at any moment, regardless of your hourly, salaried, or on a contract basis. Now keep the camera on, install the keystroke tracker, and do your job like the soulless little cog that you are. Exit has been the destructive antidote to the disassociative nature of modernity, and something which has been the pressing objective to destroy in our current society. When the joke turned meme about eating the bugs, working from home in your pod is your future, so just accept it, bigot, it is clear that the ability to get up and walk away, and to say no to the situation, which is not just limited to us here in the United States, is an ability that they don't want you to have anymore. To escape the countryside and farm is contributing to climate change. Don't eat the meat. Leaving the city for the burbs to have a family is white flight, you racist. Your place that isn't the pod is classist. You will stay in your designated workstation and do your job. Working from home is a step that's encouraging this trend to continue, and it's been discussed to a degree in the World Economic Forum's Great Reset Agenda. Build back better by working from home, never owning anything as you and your androgynous partner eat bug burgers and stream digital content that you don't own and only shows programs with the correct woke politics. And forget that all of this can be locked away if your Amazon Alexa hears wrong think in the home, or if your Zoom calls at work record a naughty joke in your morning pillar icebreaker. I know that this is quite depressing, and for some of you it might even sound a bit hyperbolic that I need to go outside, touch grass, refer back to my Real Talk videos, I'm outside quite often, I live in the middle of nowhere. But this has been an ongoing narrative that's been discussed long before COVID. Take this article from The Guardian that's been making the rounds on Twitter, discussing about living at your job at Google. It's from 2014, before Trump, before COVID, before the accelerationism. The virus and our response to it has still left millions in lockdown, even now in 2021 in many parts of the West and some states here in the U.S. 
With many pubs, restaurants, and local businesses closed, what else are you to do than to stay at home, work, and order from Amazon and buy things off big tech platforms? If you can't escape it, though, at the current moment, do your best to make a clearly defined workspace. A room with a door that you can close and keep it away out from the rest of your home. Be sure to keep the notifications from work turned off on your phone and computer when you reach the end of the workday. Do what you can to create a physical, as well as mental distance that establishes a much-needed boundary. A consensual relationship and contract in terms of employment is not something I wish to remove or abolish. I'm not an anti-capitalist, but I do have issues with the growing erasure of the individual and the family in the name of economic productivity. This isn't to disregard the efforts of those who have built a business or something that is deserving of one's patronage, but there is more to life than to spend all day looking at spreadsheets and screens. To those who know what I'm talking about, consider the fact that there are massive buildings and complexes in Silicon Valley that are for the needs of the employees completely. Living quarters, gyms, restaurants, transportation, all at the company expense. It appears we've gone basically full circle, heading back towards the days of the company town. And I'm worried, based on current trends, that our affinity from working for home will only compound that. This isn't even scratching the surface on the question of taxation and revenues. 2020 was filled with articles about how depressed revenue streams and shortfalls due to gas taxes and the lack of transportation and driving, so there was a discussion over the idea of taxing people who worked from home. Even as things opened back up here in the states in some places, between commuting and teleworking and the rising gas prices, people's wallets would be indeed stretched thin if some kind of tax plan were to include this. This would make the ability to patron mom and pop, brick and mortar stores, all the more difficult and they've suffered enough during this time of mandatory lockdowns and reduced business capacity. The line is only going to continue to be blurred between the personal and the occupation. HR and its progressive takeover of the corporate world and culture will soon, if it hasn't already, find a way to permeate itself into your home life as well. The standards of labor have been drastically changed in the last year, even more so if we compare trends of the last 50 years. Our globalistic neoliberal intelligentsia has seen to that, and unions have been co-opted for political purposes and have been defeated by their very nature by gatekeeping several industries. Recourse for the individual is under threat by the concern of being replaced by cheap foreign workers. These ongoing trends reinforce the desire, as well as the need, to learn skills that will be needed in any economy. Technical skills, mechanical, agricultural, and physical labor. My final thought on this is that I don't think that this is necessarily a traditionally left-right issue, although it inevitably will become one as progressives continue to be consumed and co-opted by woke capital as they turn into the good little consumers that they are for their identities. Just look at how woke capital does this to deflect responsibility onto the ordinary individual, with how the term carbon footprint was used to deflect blame away from the company and let the masses take the share of the blame on pollution. I've discussed this counter-revolutionary practice before, which I'll link at the end of this video. We must reject this new normal of permanence and telework, and do what we can to make the traditional boundaries of work and home life a more lasting fixture. You are more than a cog, more than a future occupant of some Google-sponsored life pod. Learn lasting skills. Take the steps to live within your means and do what you can to reject the looming shadow of these corporate entities rapidly gaining power and influence equal to that of a nation-state. That's all I have for now. Be prudent, everyone. Thank you all for watching, and as always, sharing and liking would be a huge help in this channel's growth. Feedback in the comments is always appreciated, and along with subscribing if you think I'm worth my salt and what I opine. If you really think I'm worth something, check out my subscribe star, it's linked in the description, you'd find yourself in some really good company. You can follow me on Twitter at 2 prudential and I'll see you all in the next video.